All right, so we're back in the Toyota, and actually yesterday when I got home, it was late at night. I accidentally let go of the clutch, so it turned off and it wouldn't turn back on. And I don't know if you could see that, but the charge light and the, oh, the brake light is still on. Uh, they kind of stay on sometimes. But if you see my voltage, I'm gonna turn on the lights. You see it drop, and it goes back up. Turn on the lights, it drops. So. I'm thinking it's the alternator so we're gonna replace that right now but we're not gonna replace it with the stock alternator we're gonna replace it with a 120 amp alternator so I guess it's kind of like a budget upgrade for these trucks uh, the alternator is from a Jaguar XJ6 and it should be a direct bolt-in except for the the pulley you have to switch over the 22re pulley to the alternator where we have the alternator i'm about to show you guys right now okay so this is the part number but i'll open it up for you guys this is it I'll show you the back so i think this should be oh no on the 22re get things up here but it should work it's a thing plug so it should be the same thing from what I read. And we just gotta remove this pulley. I think first we're gonna pull out the uh, 22RE uh, alternator. And then we'll throw this one on. We got this one at AutoZone. It was, it was like 220, 230 bucks, but that's a $90 course. So when we return the old uh, alternator, we're gonna get $90 back. We used the $20 rewards thing and there was like a 20% promotion for the month of November. No, October, sorry. So we're going to go ahead and throw this one on there. And the reason we went with this, we wanted a direct bolt in. So the other ones are roughly like 350, 300, 350 bucks. And if you do the CS144 or something like that, you have to modify the bracket up here or you have to buy the adapter which is another 100 100 something you end up spending about the same amount of money so this one we're still roughly in 150 without the core charge so it's not bad i mean for a small little upgrade so we're gonna give it a try and see how it works out worst case scenario we'll just go with the high output the 250 amp uh alternators but since this is from uh, autozone we're gonna have lifetime warranty on this so let's go over to the truck and start taking it apart. We're gonna start off by removing the battery post and actually throwing the battery on the charger. So we have to get these with the Allen wrench. And we had to use these to do the big four upgrade. So that's why we have these battery posts. All right, so nothing here should have power anymore. And we're gonna get to this bolt. I mean, sorry, to this nut. It's a 10 millimeter. And then we're gonna have to undo this other uh, nut right here. I think that's an eight millimeter for, this, for the ground that we did to the alternator. If you haven't watched that video, go ahead and watch it. It's for a big four upgrade. Okay, so we removed both of the cables. This is two gauge welding wire. And um, now what we're gonna do is get to that 14 millimeter bolt. I think it's a 14. That's gonna release the tension from the belt. And once it releases the tension, we'll get underneath and get to the 14 millimeter that's underneath. Oh, and we also have to get this plug, which I'm forgetting. Uh, let me see if I could reach it right now. I'm gonna have to do it two hands, so I'm gonna put you guys down for a bit. All right, so that bolt right here ended up being a 12 millimeter. So we're just gonna back it off enough to get the belt out. But we are gonna have to lift up the truck and get the tension off because it's pretty tight. So let me lift up the truck real quick. All right, so we got the 14 millimeter 
I say actually like a 13 millimeter bolt from underneath. Now we're gonna try to fish the alternator out through here. So we won't have to remove the radiator hose. So let me try to get it with both of my hands because it's kinda tight down here. And hopefully we're able to do this. Okay, so I was able to pull this out without removing the hose. And all I did was just, you know, move the hose to the side and then pull the alternator out. So this is going to be like a little side by side. This is the stock alternator. And this is the Jaguar alternator. The casing is a little bigger. And so this pulley has to go on this side and this one has to go back over here. But I haven't had luck pulling this one off. So I had to go borrow an impact and hopefully be able to remove it like that. And the mounting holes, they look like they're in the same place. So hopefully it works out. On the back side, so the, this plug is on the same side. This one changes. This one's back here, the other one's up top. We're on our way to a machine shop. So the original V belt pulley has to go on the new alternator. So this is the serpentine belt pulley. And we have to get this whole board out to the same size as this. From what I've read online, this uh, the hole on this pulley is 70 millimeters and on the Toyota is 50 millimeters. So we took it to one shop, but they weren't able to open it up all the way. So now we have to take it to another shop. All right, so we're back from the machine shop and I would suggest getting the pulley done at a shop that you know that could do the pulley. Because we took it to one shop and at the end of the day, they say that they couldn't. So the, the pulley was there for the whole day for no reason. So now we had to take it to another shop and they were they have to get it done till tomorrow because it's too late right now so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on sanding this down with the flap wheel or maybe cut a little bit off with the grinder i don't know yet but on the stock one as you can see i don't know if you guys could tell but this lines up all the way to up here and on this one it's a little off so this is sticking out a little too much right here so instead of bending the bracket because people also bend the bracket outwards i guess so they could fit the bolt instead of doing that i'm gonna try to hit it with the flap wheel sand this down it's aluminum so you know you gotta wear a mask and stuff i guess i don't know and uh we're gonna get to working on this for now so let me find a way to Get a straight line from here to there. I don't know, maybe use some tape or something. And then we'll see how much we have to knock off. All right, so there you have it. All I did was just lay a piece of tape over this shit. And then um, went all the way across. And it looks like it's a little that way, but oh well. I think it's gonna work, I mean. Worst comes to worst, if we have to shim it with the then wash it and we'll do go ahead and do that and all i did was uh use the cut off wheel just as much as i could off it's a little bit thicker than this but whatever the blade eight plus this and looks pretty straight so i think it should work Okay, so since the alternator is done, now we're going to remove this lower radiator hose right here. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but the stock one, I was able, to, the stock alternator, I was able to remove through this gap. We're upside down in front of the truck now, so through here. We just had to move this out of the way, but the new one is bigger, so it's not going to fit. So we have to remove this hose, which sucks because we're going to lose uh, coolant. Okay, so we finally got the pulley back. We installed it, so now we just gotta tighten this nut. And we just need to tighten it a little more. So it's like a 10 millimeter that fits over the shaft. And you have to get it machined. We well, don't really have to, unless you have like a, what's that thing called, like a drill press. Cause the hole on here has to be perfectly centered or else it'll vibrate. And from what I've heard is that the vibration can or will uh, destroy the alternator so this is almost ready to go on and we're gonna throw this on this um, alternator to return it to AutoZone 
for the core charge so another thing i was noticing is that this um this stud right here is a little bigger than the stock stud i think yeah i think it is a little bigger so we're gonna figure that out and we're still gonna run the ground to this uh case right here on this nut right here so the ground's gonna go here and the power's gonna go here or actually no my bad the ground is gonna go here and the power's gonna go over here so let me try to uh throw it on the truck and see if it works all right so now we're having another issue to put this in is pretty tight in here i don't know if you guys can see it right here on the bracket there's this uh insert on the bracket that's sticking out so it's not letting the uh, alternator sit in here because it's like in the way right there so i'm gonna use a zazal to cut it out hopefully and then we should be able to put it in i already tried pushing it out i tried a whole diff bunch of different things even vice grips and all that and it's not working so i'm gonna have to cut it out all right so i had to take off the intake tube and the little plastic plastic that goes down here because we have power steering so it's hard to get that bolt in but we were able to do it and we got the ground Let me show you we got the ground and the positive on this is the power and the ground and also the the factory positive is still on there we had to open it up a little bit to make a fit so we're going to finish putting this on and then we're going to get underneath and tighten the last bolt and put the radiator hose back on and then we have to top it off <clears throat> but so far it looks like it's worked. I mean, the plug went right in. It's kind of tight back here because of the stupid hose right here. But it worked. All right, so we got it all done. The alternator's in there. The ground is right there. Power's up back here. We topped off the radiator. Now let's turn it on. Voltage is pretty good now, even with the lights on. So, it's still a little bit shaky because I think we have to adjust the valve, so that'll be in a couple of videos. But that's it for the alternator. So basically, we had to open up the pulley. Uh, we had to cut that little extra piece off of the bottom bracket of the alternator, and we had to shave off the top mount of the alternator just so we won't have to bend the stock alternator bracket and then the cable has to be upgraded because for the alternator you have this thin cable right here it's a little fuse um what else the stock belt fits so you don't have to get another belt and that lower radiator hose has to be removed in order to fit the new one but that's it so this upgrade was necessary because of the sound system we're going to be putting on this so next we're going to be working on the interior we're going to install some kill man new carpet and sound system and all that so stay tuned for those videos make sure to like comment subscribe follow us on instagram at yonke underscore oxc films i'll leave that in the description down below and we'll catch you in the next one